After a very long plane flight, we arrived at Queen Alia Airport in Jordan. We were met by our Jordanian guide, Patience. We boarded a bus for the Cameo Hotel where we spent the night. On the way to the hotel, Patience gave us quite a travelogue on Jordan. Unfortunately, it was too dark to take pictures. We had dinner at the hotel and then retired to our rooms for the evening. This is our room in the Hotel Cameo. Very early the next morning, we got up early and had breakfast and then proceeded to the border crossing to Israel. Breakfast was a little disappointing for some of the kids because we had tea, tang, and toast, a regular continental breakfast, and they were expecting more. Please notice the water bottle on the table. This is our Jordanian guide, Patience. He was on the bus here giving us the lecture. We arrived in Israel after crossing the border and saw this Palestinian refugee camp in our first sight of Jerusalem. Down into the valley. Uh, we also see some excavation. The Silver Dome is a mosque, also on the Temple Mount. It's called the Mosque of El Aqsa. There's excavations below it. Can you see that? There's especially some stairs going up towards it, up, climbing up. Those stairs are original stairs from biblical times. They have been reconstructed. But on these steps, the prophets and definitely Jesus used to go into the temple. That's how they went into the temple, and that's how uh, uh, that was the main entrance into the temple. It was through uh, that particular spot, that particular staircase that you see over there. After leaving the bus, we proceeded to the Garden of Gethsemane. Lady Bird Johnson here. <laughs> but um, at any rate, the Garden of Gethsemane, the so-called official one, that's very beautifully taken care of, is just a little down below, usually quite crowded, and you'll see it's also quite artificial. The word Gethsemane means an oil press. And in Bible times, we know that the entire mount was completely covered with olive trees. If you look at the trees around you, some of them are hundreds of years old. You can see the old trunks. Some of the oldest trees are inside the other garden. Now we know that when the Romans conquered Jerusalem, they cut down all the trees that existed here. But an olive tree is a tree that never dies. Even though you would completely cut it down, it'll renew itself. It'll send new shoots, it'll send new branches, and it will really live forever. The roots of the tree live forever. So when some botanists tell us that maybe the trees, the oldest ones, go 2,000 years back, definitely the roots do. And it's quite possible that some of the trees are that old. Garden of Gethsemane is extremely important in the last night before Jesus is taken prisoner. It's there that he tries to stay up the night and he asks his disciples to stay up and pray with him. And three times goes and sees that they are asleep. It's there that the Roman soldiers come and he tells them that he is the man they're looking for. They're taking him prisoner and some of the most beautiful prayers are said in the Garden of Gethsemane. So it's from the garden that he's taken by the Romans to the house of the high priest Caiaphas and there goes to his last judgment. Again, look at the city. The Temple Mount is right here. 
Several prophecies that Jesus says about Jerusalem. He foresees the destruction of Jerusalem. He, he mourns and cries over weeks over the destruction of Jerusalem. And he sees it from somewhere on the Mount of Olives. Now we'll go into the so-called official Garden of Gethsemane. This is the choir president, Chris Lehman, in front of our bus. This is the bus we had the whole time in Israel. This is our Israeli guide, Gila. She was very knowledgeable and a charming lady. We were thrilled to have her as our guide. This was Asim, the Mario Andretti of Jerusalem. He was a wild and crazy bus driver, but he drove very well. We had lunch at the Holy Land Hotel, and on the grounds of the hotel is this lovely model of Old Jerusalem. It's a beautifully historically accurate reconstruction of Jerusalem at the time of Herod, and it features the Temple of Herod. This is the second temple, and you can see by the buildings in back what a large model it is. To the left of the temple, in the background, is a man named Chaim. We got to meet him, and he's done a lot of the research and a lot of the building of this model. He gave us each a stone of the type used for the model. We went about 10 miles outside the city of Jerusalem to Malay Hamisha. Malay Hamisha is a kibbutz, and they have rest houses. We spent several nights at Malay Hamisha. This is the sign pointing the way to Malay Hamisha. There's the name, in case you want to know how it's spelled. The grounds were lovely. It was a very park-like setting. The buildings were very, very nice. There's our intrepid cameraman in his usual pose. The grape arbor overlooks the valley toward Jerusalem. These are some of the buildings of the kibbutz. Next, you're going to hear a tape of Larry Warden warming the kids up for that night's performance in Bethlehem. <laughs>
This is breakfast Christmas morning at the kibbutz. This is one of the scrolls that was presented to the choir by the mayor of Bethlehem on Christmas Eve. This is the second scroll that was presented to the choir director on Christmas Eve. It is signed by Ariel Sharon. It's hard to read because it's in Hebrew, but if you look at the bottom you can see Ariel Sharon's signature.
want you to pick up your little gifts and uh, Elma. I want to Turn around, girls. Oh! Get it, get it, get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Lunch at the Citadel Restaurant by David Citadel outside the walls of Jerusalem. That was like you were trying to shoot a sniper out of the top of the All the holes were right around the windows. That's a pair of
This is outside of St. Catherine's Church, which is next to the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. After leaving St. Catherine's, we went to the Three Arches, where we did some shopping before returning to the kibbutz to prepare for the evening's performance at the Jerusalem Theater. <laughs>
party of the Oaxaca Christmas. From the islands of Fiji, the islands of Fiji, we have Mataseri Niviti, which means in the Fiji language, the choir. Mataseri Niviti, from Fiji, the director, Dr. Menoa Masi.
This is the Church of the Annunciation in Nazareth. It is where Mary is supposed to have been told that she will bear a child. This is a new church. It was completed in the late 60s, but it's built over the grotto. The artwork in this church has come from all over the world, and it's done in various mediums, including mosaic and paintings, and it depicts the Virgin Mary in various poses. While we were outside, we took pictures of the artwork, and several groups stood around talking. When we entered the church, we were able to hear the organ and look down into the church, into the grotto. Above Larry Warden and Sandy's head is the symbol of the Franciscan Fathers. They take care of many of the shrines in Israel. After leaving Nazareth, we proceeded to Tiberias on the Sea of Galilee, where we ate lunch. We ate at the Ron Beach Hotel, where they served St. Peter's fish. St. Peter's fish had the heads and tails on it, so the kids weren't really too thrilled with that. They also gave us chicken as an alternative, however. This is the Sea of Galilee from the window of the hotel. These are fishing boats on the Sea of Galilee, and it looks about like we presume it must have looked for years.
Sheep still graze on the hillsides in many parts of Israel as they have for centuries. We took the bus to the top of this mountain to the Church of the Beatitudes. This is a sort of traditional place where the Sermon on the Mount is supposed to have been given. This is the outside of the Church of the Beatitudes. And this is the view of the Sea of Galilee from the window at the top of the hill inside the church. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, Wherewith shall it be so?
Leaving the Mount of the Beatitudes, we proceeded to Capernaum. Capernaum was the home of Peter. At Capernaum, we saw the ruins of one of the few synagogues left in the area. 
This is a synagogue where Jesus did preach for sure. The actual foundations of this synagogue have been covered over by the foundations of a Roman temple and the pillars and columns that you see are of that Roman temple. From there we boarded a boat and crossed the Sea of Galilee back to Tiberias and then proceeded on to a baptismal spot on the River Jordan where the kids sang. Right? Yeah, I two rows. Two rows. The 
next morning, December 27th, we were up early, perhaps a little too early, for Jeff to visit the crusader city of Akko or Acre or Accra, depending on the pronunciation you choose. This is an old crusader city. It was so well fortified that when the Turks came in, they couldn't knock it down, so they buried it in rubble. They are currently excavating this city extensively, and it's going to be a beautiful tourist attraction when they're finished. Below him, the level goes all the way to ground level, and like in all the stories that you read about the Saber's castle, the secret underground castle. On the way out of the castle itself, the kids found a monkey to take a picture of. This is the marketplace at Akko, and it looks very much as we imagined it must have looked forever. People selling their wares on the streets, just as they have always. Then we went to a hostel in Acre. It is, as Gila described it, the original motel. The animals were housed on the first floor and the people were housed on the second floor. While we were there, the kids sang and several groups of tourists entered the hostel area until we had quite a large crowd, including a group from France. <laughs> I don't know the name of it. Channel 7 on the spot. It's, it's a, the one on the water and the one on the ocean. From Akko, we went to the Caprice Diamond Factory in Haifa. Diamond cutting is the largest business in Israel. We got a chance to see them cutting diamonds, and then the kids were asked to sing.
This is a view of Haifa from the top of Mount Carmel. We went to the top of Mount Carmel to see a Carmelite church. This is the site where Elijah slew the priests of Baal, and this is a statue in his memory that sits in the courtyard of the church. These are three unknown persons at the base of the statue. It was getting quite dark on this side of the mountain, so it's hard to see, but this is the Carmelite church. This is a Bedouin camp, a very modern one. The tents are covered with blue plastic foam, and to the left and slightly out of the picture is a large television antenna. From there we went to Caesarea, which is on the Mediterranean Sea also, and we had lunch. Here again, the fish had their heads and tails on. The kids were not real thrilled. Hi, Bob. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Oh, Mommy, I'm on TV. This is Mama. 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 I always did like this stuff. What is this? <laughs> We're not going. <laughs> Put your glasses on your Peter there. <laughs> Have you had a Peter yet? <laughs> I've been thinking how many toys for Christmas. Hello, Mr. Collins. Yeah, Mr. Collins. From the city of Caesarea, we boarded the bus for a quick ride to the Caesarea Amphitheater. There, the kids were able to entertain quite a large crowd, including the same French tour group. They had also been in the diamond factory while we were there. The tour guide was very unhappy about the fact that we kept interrupting his speeches, but the people were very pleased. Theater. 
So you have so many facil facilities for entertainment for so many people. It must have been a very large city. Yeah, we'll see it. We'll see it. Uh, the, uh, yeah. the city of Caesarea then was, uh, was a magnificent large city. Now, he, Herod also needed a, a high place, an elevated place, to build a temple that he dedicated to Adonis. The whole city was dedicated to Caesar August, Caesar Augustus, hence the name Caesarea, and he built a Roman temple. There was no hill in Caesarea, unfortunately, so he just proceeded and built one. Our last view of Caesarea was of the aqueduct. Then we went back to the kibbutz and were entertained by a group of Finnish kibbutz workers. The next morning we went into the city of Jerusalem to the pools of Bethesda. They're a natural pool where Jesus healed the paralytic. Later they were built up into a Roman bath. There are two large pools and several smaller ones. Next to the pools of Bethesda is the church of St. Anne's where the kids did some singing. There is a seven second echo in St. Anne's. <laughs>
This is a real old-fashioned Bedouin camp, the kind that we're used to thinking of. It brings to mind shepherds abiding in the fields with their flocks. This is the Dead Sea on the way to Masada. We stopped at a place near Qumran to see the Dead Sea. It was a little cool for our party to go in the water. However, there were other people in the water. While we were there, we found a snack stand, and the kids indulged in a real junk food orgy. They had ice cream and Coke and various other things. <laughs> At the base of Masada, we had lunch at Herod's Hall restaurant. From there, we boarded the cable car for the trip to the top of the mountain at Masada. This is the steam room at Masada. It's part of Herod's winter palace that was built there. This is the view of the Dead Sea from the top of Masada. It's quite a lovely view out over the Dead Sea. The other side of the Dead Sea is Jordan. The more daring and intrepid among us decided to take the hike to the bottom of the mountain. Gila and some of the kids thought it would be even more fun to run down. But the rest of us decided to make it a leisurely walk, and it took about half an hour. 
The next, the next morning we took the official choir photographs in the old city of Jerusalem and the kids sang at St. Anne's.
after the photographs were taken, we were free for a day of shopping in the old city of Jerusalem. This is in the Arab quarter. We did a lot of haggling. This is one of the shops with the beautiful colorful rugs on the walls. And this is walking along the wall toward the Wailing Wall and the Dome of the Rock. That evening we had a birthday party for Tracy and Sandy. Unfortunately, both of their names were spelled wrong on the cake. But they seemed very pleased with their cake anyway. After the birthday party, we boarded a bus for the YMCA for a demonstration of some Israeli folk dancing. Show 
Here we are walking the Via Della Rosa, the way of the cross. What happens in Jerusalem? You go through a door and you're in the, you, you go into another world. And it happens all over. I mean, one door that you went through, we had St. Anne, the beautiful, this beautiful medieval church and the excavations of the food from 300 BC. Here you come into this Ethiopian community. It's really, it's made of so many worlds and you sometimes cross the door and you go through 400 years or more through the Ethiopian church. The bench is there. As you go in, just sit down for a moment. They'll show you some of their books and I'll explain a little bit about the whole uh, a tradition in the, the Christian faith in Ethiopia. Okay. So the services are usually very long and during holidays can go on for uh, sometimes as much as eight hours. And in the traditional way, they used to stand up all the time. And because of that, there was a way of leaning against special sticks. Okay. Thank you. You see, that's, thank you very much, thank you very much. That's the way to lean, just to, to help you stand up for so many hours. They get really tired and sit down on the floor, but uh, most of the time it's done. This is the tomb inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This is where the Catholics, and Eastern Orthodox, and various other religions believe that Jesus was buried. This is what Larry likes to call the cistern chapel. It is a cistern in which Queen Helena is supposed to have found the pieces of the real cross. In the tomb in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the kids were given candles, which they lit. While we were on our way out of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the Muezzin in the mosque nearby began his call to worship. It, it, was, it was quite a culture shock to emerge from this orthodox environment to hear the Muslims calling their faithful to prayer. In the Jewish quarter of the old city, they're restoring a Herodian indoor covered street. These are some of the old pillars that held up the cover for that street. From there we walked to the site of the upper room. They, this is not the actual building, but it is known that there was a two-story building on this site in Jesus' time. So this is the traditional spot of the upper room. Then we followed Gila to King David's tomb. And again, it is not the actual burial site of King David, but it's a traditional kind of place where his burial is observed. After all that walking, we took a little bit of a rest before going down to see the Wailing Wall, or the Western Wall. The Western Wall is actually the Western Wall of King Herod's Temple. It's the second temple that was built in Jerusalem. The reason it's sometimes called the Wailing Wall is because the Jews pray there both for the destruction of Herod's Temple and pray for the rebuilding of the Temple in Jerusalem. This temple area is divided into two parts. On the left is the men's half, and on the right is the women's half. The men wear the yarmulke, the skull cap, as a sign of respect when they enter the area around the western wall. Thank you. 
It is traditional when visiting the Western Wall to write a prayer on a piece of paper and insert it in the cracks in the wall. And those pieces of paper are left and they're taken out three times a year and buried. Lana is writing her prayer here. All that's left of the original wall are these large stones at the bottom, the ones with the stains on them. That evening we went to the Dallas restaurant for our final farewell party. Gila brought her family to this party and she said it's the first time she's ever had them with her. We felt very privileged. This is her, this is her son Ariel and her daughter Mariah. We also gave Gila and Kay gifts and thanked them for being our guides. This is Kay receiving her gift. New Year's Eve. This is Kay Tripp in the hotel lobby making a final count of the luggage before we boarded the bus to head for Jordan. This is the Dead Sea. Very, very early in the morning. This is sunrise. We're coming down the hill from Jerusalem. People talk about going up to Jerusalem. Jerusalem truly is at the top of the hill. You have to climb the hill from all directions to get to Jerusalem. As you can see by the clock, it is very early in the morning. We've already left the city and it's not 7 o'clock yet. The unimportant in our very scientific and pragmatic work to devote so much time to music to me seems really just wonderful. And uh, keep it up. If anybody, which I hope, comes back to Israel, please get in touch with me. Mr. Warden has my address. Mrs. Tripp has my address. Uh, there's a couple, right? There's a couple of you who also have my address. Now, if if you write to me, just write that you're with the Arroyo Choir. I'll um, I'll remember you. There's no. There's absolutely no doubt about that. I may be slow at, uh, at answering, or you may not even hear from me, but that doesn't mean that I didn't get the letter. I didn't read it very carefully and cherish it. If you come, please get in touch with me. Uh, as much time as I'll have, as much as I'll be able to, I'll definitely uh, like to see you. And that goes not only for the choir kids, for everybody else in the, in the bus. So just thank you. Chicken coop or chicken farms at the right side. We're still in Hushbowl Valley. Madaba, that's the land of fruit. And Madaba, it's far from here, about 12 miles. Madaba, also the meaning the city of mosaics, because they have a nice mosaic name. It was built at Byzantine at 6th century AD. The map, that's for Palestine and Egypt. Please don't leave anything in the bus. Please don't leave anything in the bus, and make sure you don't leave anything behind you. It's very important. And always try to keep your passports handy. Also, try to keep your passports handy. Now I must say, Happy New Year for everybody, and I wish for you a safe flight. 
I am praying for you to keep you together and to give you your happiness. God be with you and patience, he never forget you. Smile, when you smile, the Lord loves you. We're now flying over the Alps. What we didn't know was we had another 20 hours of flight to still endure. Uh, I haven't really said much on that, but coming back home now and on the left, yeah. looking outside the window and I guess we're over some snow now and we're coming back home. We've had a good trip. And I've really enjoyed myself. I'm glad to be getting back to the good old US of A and land in the free and home with a brave. And I'm glad to be able to get back and find out what's going on in the playoffs. Oh, 